Let's say that you are managing an airline miles program and you want to have a list with your client's names and the number of miles they have. In Swift, you can store this information in a type of data structure called a dictionary. Developers use dictionaries when they need to look up values based on their identifier. A dictionary is a collection of items that have a key and value. The keys must be of the same type and the values must also be of the same type. As an example, you can have Richie with 500 points, Peter with 400 and Amy with 800. In a dictionary, each value is associated with a unique key and you use the keys to look up the associated value. In programming, this is commonly known as a key value pair, which consists of two related data elements separated by the colon symbol. The types of the keys and values must be specified or inferred. Let's unpack this example in more depth. To create and store a dictionary, you start by defining a variable. Let's say travel miles, followed by the colon symbol. Next, you specify the data types for the key and for the value. For example, you type the keyword dictionary and then string for the type of the name of the traveller and int for the type of the number of air miles. These types are enclosed by a less than sign and a greater than sign and separated by a comma. Next is the equal symbol or assignment operator that will store the dictionary contents in the variable. Finally, you can have the name of the travellers and their miles within square brackets. For example, Richie within double quotes, colon and his miles 500. Then Peter within double quotes, colon and his miles 400. And then Amy with 800. Notice that in the syntax you start with a square bracket. Then you have key value pairs separated by comma and each key is separated from its value by a colon. But, as mentioned before, if the types of key and value are inferred, there is no need to specify them. You do not have to include the part where the data types are specified. So, you just write var travel miles dictionary, the types and the key value pairs. In Swift, you can use the count property to count how many items or key value pairs there are in a dictionary. To do this, you can declare a constant with the keyword let. Let's call it item count. Then you assign it the number of items in the dictionary by using the count property. So you have the equal sign and my dictionary dot count. In Swift, you can also create an empty dictionary. For example, var my dictionary equals dictionary, and then the key and value types within the less than and greater than symbols separated by comma. And finally, the open and close parenthesis with nothing inside, meaning that you are creating an empty dictionary. Once the dictionary is defined, you can access and modify it either by methods or properties or using subscript syntax, similar to how you do it with arrays. Now, let's cover how to add an item to your dictionary. To add a new traveller and their miles, you type the dictionary name, which is travel miles, then the item key, or Daryl, within square brackets, the equal sign, and the number of miles Daryl has, 700. Note that this new item is not added in any particular order in the dictionary. OK, so what if you want to retrieve the air miles of a traveller in the dictionary? To do this, you must supply a key so that the number of miles is returned. When you supply a key, it may be the case that the traveller is no longer in the dictionary. That would result in an error. To prevent this from happening, you start your code with an if let. So you have if let, then you declare a variable, traveller miles, equal, travel miles, and Peter in quotes and within square brackets. This code assigns the traveller miles variable the number of miles Peter has, 400. If you try to retrieve the number of miles of a traveller that does not exist in the dictionary, the if let prevents an error from happening and the traveller miles variable receives the value of nil. Now let's explore how you can change an item. Again, you can have the dictionary name, which is travel miles, followed by the key of the value you want to change. In this case, recall that Richie exists. To update Richie's miles, you can type Richie in double quotes and inside brackets, followed by the equal sign and the value 1200. You can also set or change an item in a dictionary differently by using the update value for key method. For example, you can start with if let. Then you add a variable called old value and the equal sign. 
followed by the dictionary name and travel miles dot update value. Next, within parenthesis, you type the updated number of miles and then four key, Peter. Finally, you print the value stored in the old value variable. Let's now cover how you can delete an item by calling the dictionary's remove value for key method and specifying the key of the item you want to remove. For example, if you want to delete the Richie item, you use if let again so it won't return an error if the item doesn't exist, and then a new variable named deleted item. Then the equal sign, the dictionary name, travel miles, dot remove value, and within parenthesis you write for key colon Richie in double quotes. You can also remove an item by assigning the value nil to a key. For example, you can type travel miles, double quotes, Richie within square brackets, equals nil. The difference is that in the remove value for key method example, a variable that stored the old value was created. In contrast, you do not store the old value anywhere when you assign nil to a dictionary key, as you did in the second example. In this video, you learned that you can store a key and its respective values in a dictionary. You also discovered how dictionaries make it possible for you to retrieve, change, and even remove items using different methods.